Uh, Galatians 5.16 says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth after, against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, uh, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murderers, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you therefore, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ, they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If, ye, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, envying one another. Uh, let's have a word of prayer and then we'll uh, get into the message. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for giving us the opportunity to be here tonight. Lord, thank you so much for bringing my family safely here. Thank you, God, for giving us the opportunity to be in the service with Emmanuel Baptist Church and Pastor Foster. Uh, Lord, we want to ask tonight that you please be with the rest of the service. God, please uh, fill me with your spirit. Give me the words to say. Lord, I always ask this, but let it be your words and not my words, God. Uh, please calm my nerves and, and speak to heart tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, every Christian has two natures. He serves the law of God with the mind and the law of sin with the flesh. It is a constant struggle that we all must deal with. Like most messages that I preach, uh, I'm not sure if this is for all preachers, but this is pretty much what I do. Like most messages I preach, I'm directing this message at me. Uh, I battle the flesh and the devil constantly. And unfortunately, more times than I'd like to admit, I let the flesh win. Uh, I am very, very good at staying busy with the things of God, but I'm not always good at keeping my relationship with God a priority. This is what I mean. We all have an eternal battle inside of us between the flesh and the spirit, and it will not end until we are with the Savior in heaven. I have three main points tonight regarding these two natures, but first I think it's important to point out that you will not struggle with the flesh and the spirit until you are born again. An unsaved individual will not have the Holy Spirit inside him to direct him in the things of God. I'm not saying that every unsaved person lives wickedly every moment of every day, but he will not have the Spirit to convict his heart and lead him in the correct manner. We will speak much about the old man tonight and the new man, uh, but the most important thing that is to understand that to have the guidance through the Spirit, we must be saved. God sent his son, only Son to die on the cross for our sins. He wants the entire world to know that, and there must be a moment in your life when you place your complete trust in the one and only that can save you. Then and only then will you be able to properly be guided by the Spirit of God. That doesn't mean you will never sin again, because assuredly you will. Uh, but let's talk now about these two natures. So number one, uh, I want to talk about the fact that there is two natures. So turn with me to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, we're going to read a couple verses there. Ephesians chapter 4. And so there, I want to talk about the fact that there is two natures. And so first we're going to look at the old man. Ephesians 4, and we're going to read verse number 22. Ephesians 4, 22 says, That ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. It is an undisputed fact, according to the word of God, that we have a sin nature. Adam's sin, as stated in Romans 5, 12, brought sin and death, to all man. Romans 5.12 says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Uh, my brother mentioned it this morning, uh, but we don't have to teach sin. Uh, my kids are very good at sinning already. Uh, we, uh, we, we all grow up that way. I remember uh, Jessica and I uh, went to a, a church a while back, and the pastor he preached for about two and a half hours. And so I like, I like preaching, but I'm not sure I like preaching quite that much. Uh, but, uh, but he preached for two and a half hours and tried his best to convince us that we weren't born with a sin nature, that we choose sin. Uh, and, and, you know, he spent like that, that long trying to convince us of that. And at the end of the message, he says, but I guess it doesn't really matter because we all choose sin anyway. 
And so we're all sinners. And so then I thought, well, then why have I sat here for two and a half hours <laughs> listening to you try to convince me that I, 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 didn't, I wasn't born a sinner? But the fact is that we are all sinners. Uh, we, uh, as stated in tw verse 22, it clearly says the old man. Uh, but he's not using this, world, this word old to signify age, rather as in former. Uh, you know, he says, he says that we have to take away the former conversation of the old man. And uh, he's not talking about my dad. He is talking about the former, the former man. And I love that because that gives us hope. Right? Yeah. We don't have to live in sin. Right. We are not completely controlled by Satan and, and the things of this world. And I think of how amazing it is that we can know that. That we can know that there is a way for us to defeat sin. Uh, sometimes it doesn't feel like that. Sometimes it feels like we're never, ever going to beat the devil. We're never, ever going to beat sin. Sin. Uh, but praise the Lord, God already took care of that for Amen. us. And so we know that we will be able to uh, escape sin. Uh, but it will be a struggle. And so let's talk about, secondly, the new man. And so let's continue in Ephesians 4. We're going to read verse 23 and 24. It says, And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, right. which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Yep. Here we see the new man, but we see one more very important thing, a command. The Bible says here to put on the new man. Right. It requires action. For us to live a godly life, we must act. We must do our part. Uh, and if we put on the new man, we will follow God in righteousness and true holiness. And what I believe true holiness is, is we, it means that we do what we're supposed to do, not for show, but because we love God. Right. Uh, you, you know, and just, I'm, I'm just going to you know, be real with you for a second. Uh, we've been on the field for two and a half years, but before that, we were on deputation for uh, about three years. And... Uh, there was good things about deputation, but there were a lot that I did not like about deputation. And one of the things was, is I felt like I was on a show all of the time. I thought I was Mr. Game Show and I was having to sell myself something about Spain and, and tell people that this is what I was going to do. And uh, there was, uh, I, rem I remember, you know, specifically a pastor calling us uh, and he, he had us come to a, a missions conference and he called all the missionaries into the, the office at the beginning of the conference and he said, okay, uh, there was, I think there was seven of us there. And he said, okay, we can only take two of you on. So whoever they like at the end of the week, the best, that's who we're going to take on. And, and that, you know, I just, I wanted to pack up right there. <laughs> uh, I, I, I wanted to, and, that, and that's why I'm so grateful for furlough. I'm so excited to be back here in the United States to tell y'all that I didn't do a single thing. God did every single piece of it. And, and I, don't, I, don't, I don't have to come tell you all the things that I hope that I can do because I can tell you that God is already working in Palma de Mallorca. And I'm so excited to be able to tell you that. Uh, and like I said, it felt, it felt very, very competitive, and, and I, don't, I, I don't like feeling like that. I just want to tell you what God has called me to do. And so, uh, so now that we've seen the fact that there are two natures, the old man and the new man, uh, and we have both of them, let's look at number two. Uh, the problem faced because of the two natures. Uh, so go with me to Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7, verse 14 and 15. Uh, sorry, verse 14, and we're going to read verse through, through verse 25. And I think that Brother Jordan and my brother both mentioned this verse a little bit this morning. Uh, but it's a good verse. And so they mentioned it. I'm going to read it. And so verse uh, Romans 7, we're going to read verse 14 through verse 25. And so the problem that we face is pretty easy. It, the problem that we face with the old man is we do wrong. And the good thing about the new man is we do right. And so let's read Romans uh, verse seven, verse, I'm sorry, chapter 7, verse 14 through verse 25. It says, for we know that the law, excuse me, for we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I, for that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I, know that in, for I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For the will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that, would I, that I would I do not, but the evil which I would not that I do. Now if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. 
I find them a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the, holy, from the, from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. I don't know if there's a more confusing uh, yet accurate verse in the entire Bible. Uh, and this is why uh, Brother Jordan and my brother just mentioned the verses this morning so they didn't have to actually read all of that. Uh, but, but it's so true, it's in, and it's incredibly relatable. Uh, we, for the most part, because we're in church, because we get here preaching, because we have the Bible, we know exactly what we should do. So why is it that more often than not, we do the exact opposite? Well, the answer is that because we allowed the old man to win. As I stated earlier, it's a constant struggle. We must battle every single day. And again, please don't think that I'm just preaching at you because this is something that I have yet to master. Uh, and like Paul said, every time I mess up, I am sick with myself. I am so disappointed that I let God down again. Uh, but we must take that action and put on the new man daily. Uh, so we have now seen these two natures. Uh, we've seen the problem that we face. And so now <clears throat> what I'd like to do is, is quickly look at a few things that we can do to deal with the two natures. And so that's number three, how to deal with the two natures. The Bible is a wonderful book. Uh, it gives us so much direction. It helps encourage us. It gives us a glimpse at heaven and at our heavenly father. But there's one thing that it's always extremely clear on, and that is that we must live our lives for God. Uh, that's why God saved us. That's why God calls us. It's because he wants us to live for him. And we're going to look at seven steps uh, that, that will allow us uh, to help the new man and the Holy Spirit win the battle. And so the first thing that we can do with the old nature is mortify it. And so I looked up the definition of mortify. Because when I think of mortify, I always think embarrassed, uh, which is generally what I am when I'm preaching. And so, uh, so but that's not the definition that we're going to look at tonight. The, there's two other definitions, and, and they, they go really well with what we're talking about. The first definition to, to mortify is to subdue or deaden. It says the body, bodily appetites, etc. So we could talk about the old man. So we're trying to subdue or deaden the old man. And it says, especially by abstinence or self-inflicted pain or discomfort. Uh, and so basically, and, and, and this is for spiritual purification. So we need to mortify, we need to deaden the old man. Uh, the next one, it says obsolete to destroy the strength, vitality, or functioning of. Uh, that's what God wants us to do with the old man. He wants us to make the old man obsolete. He wants us to destroy the strength of the old man. He wants us to take away the ability to even function. He wants us to solely be uh, the, allowing the new man uh, to be used. And so let's go to Romans chapter 8. We're going to read verse number 13. Romans 8 verse 13. Romans 8 verse 13 says, For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify, or deaden, or make obsolete, the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Uh, now go to me with, to Colossians 3 verse number 5. Colossians 3 verse number 5. Colossians 3 verse number 5 says, Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Uh, but it says again, mortify, therefore, your members. It's saying get control of your body. We must mortify ourselves or uh, subdue ourselves. We must gain control of our actions. It's always so confusing to me that God gives us a free will, and we often do the things that we wish we hadn't done. You know, we get to choose. We are the one that chose to do the wrong things. We are the one that chose to sin. And afterwards, we feel horrible about it. Uh, you know, and I, I just listed a few things that, that I, I try to do every single day. Uh, and, and it doesn't always happen. And I, I'm always mad at myself. I try to read my Bible first thing in the morning. And, I, and there's so many days that I'm reading it right before I go to bed at night because I didn't do it in the morning. And I'm mad at myself because I wanted to start my day 
with the Bible. Uh, there's days that I want to exercise, I want to run, I want to work out, and it comes to where it's like 11 o'clock at night and I'm eating Oreos, and I'm mad at myself because I didn't exercise that day. Uh, and that, that happens to me every day. And I, I speak kind, uh, you know, we, I, things I want to do, I want to speak kindly to people. I, I, want, I want to make sure that I'm presenting myself in the right way, and something happens and I end up yelling at my kids, and then I'm mad at myself because I wanted to teach them right and speak kindly uh, because I don't want them being ugly and, and hating on people. I want them to be nice. And, and then, you know, one other thing is avoid sin. Every single day I think to myself, this is the day that I'm going to be perfect. I'm not going to sin. And every single day I mess up. And at the end of the day, I'm mad at myself and I'm having to ask God to forgive me of my sin. Uh, but God gave us that free will. I'm the one that decided to sit on the couch and eat Oreos rather than go run a mile. <laughs> Uh, I'm the one that decided that I was too busy to read my Bible right, right now and I'm going to do it later. I was the one that lost my temper and yelled at somebody rather than making sure that I spoke the way I was supposed to. And so we need to do our best uh, that to, to act the appropriate way. We need to gain that control of our actions so that we can ensure that God will be glorified. And so the second thing that we can do after mortify is put off the old man. We talked about that a minute ago, but let's go back to Ephesians 4. We're going to read 22, verse, uh, verse number 22 one more time. Ephesians 4, verse number 22. Oh. <clears throat> Ephesians 4, verse number 22, that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitfulness, the deceitful lust. We're supposed to put it off. It's just, it's just like this jacket that I have on. I chose to put this on before I came here. I was the one that took the jacket, picked it up, put my arms through it, and pulled it over my shoulders. And it looked good, doesn't it? Uh, uh, no, but I chose to do this. This was an action that I did. And when I get, when I get back to the hotel tonight, I'm going to take it right back off. That's what we're supposed to do. It should be that easy. And it's not that easy. But it should be that easy. We should be able to say to the old man, I'm done with you, and just pull it right off. But we're, but we're, not, we're not always good at that. So now go with me to Colossians chapter 3. We're going to read verse number 8 and 9. Colossians 3, verse number 8 and 9. But now ye also put off all of these. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. Uh, we discussed this a bit already, but there are actions associated with the old man that we see here in these verses. And the Bible is very clear that they should not be part of our lives. Uh, and and, and I, I love how the Bible does this. You say, well, what exactly does the old man entail? Well, God says it right here. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another. And, you know... Uh, these are the things that we're, we're, we're supposed to keep away. We're supposed to put off these actions. Uh, you know, and, uh, and, and they're pretty easy to think about. You're just not supposed to get mad. And I know that that's a lot easier to say than do. Uh, because, uh, you know, Brother Jordan talked about this morning, getting ticked off at somebody who was driving on the road because they were driving like a, like a crazy person. And, or was Brother Jordan the one driving like a crazy person? I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, but, but we have to keep control of our anger, and that's not always easy for, for some of us. Uh, we have to keep control of that wrath, that malice, that blasphemy, and, and, and filthy communication out of your mouth. It means keep your talk uh, uh, clean. Keep, make sure that you're keeping your, your mouth clean. Uh, it says lie not one to another. We're not supposed to lie. And, and Lying is something that I think that we all take for granted a little bit. Uh, we think, oh, it's just a little white lie. It doesn't matter. It's not a big sin. But it is. We're not supposed to lie. We're supposed to tell the truth. And so we need to make sure that we take these and put them off. And so we were supposed to mortify our, the old man. We're supposed to put off the old man. Now we're supposed to put on the new man. Uh, Ephesians 4.24 again says, And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. And then uh, Colossians 3 again. Colossians 3 verse number 10. It says, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. I like that last part. It says, which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him. We've already talked about this action of putting on the new man. But what we're supposed to do when we put on the new man is be like Christ. The one who created us. And so, uh, you know, this is something that I said a lot on, on deputation, but it's so, it's so very true. Uh, we can be saved and not act anything like Christ. We can know that we have Christ in our heart and not act a thing like him. Uh, you know, the definition of Christian is Christ-like. Right. 
And so how can we call ourselves a Christian if we don't act anything like him? Uh, you may be on your way to heaven, but are you acting uh, like Christ would want you to act? And so, <clears throat> excuse me, we need to make sure, uh, especially in, uh, in this world that we live in, that we act like Christ, that we present ourselves in a way that God wants us to. So we have to put on that new man. Uh, then we, uh, no, the, the fourth thing that we can do is there's things that we need to lay aside. Go with me to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12, and we're going to read verse number 1. Hebrews 12, verse number 1. Wherefore, seeing we all are also, excuse me, we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin with which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. There are things in our lives that shouldn't be there. They hold us back. They keep us from giving our all to God. And, and we must have the strength to recognize these weights that the Bible is talking about and keep them as far away from us as possible. And, you know, some of them, uh, they're not necessarily bad. Uh, but they would keep us from God. So for us, we need to keep them out of our lives. Uh, you know, my brother talked about this morning about how basketball was that weight uh, that he needed to make sure that God had first place in his life, not basketball. And, and you know, I, I always think it's funny because uh, Brian's whole life was basketball, and I could have cared less about basketball, but he never beat me. I was always better than him. Uh, and y'all have to forgive me. I've been away from my brother for two and a half years, so i got to pick on him a little bit. Uh, but, uh, but there's things like sports. There's things like even... I, you know, there's some people that are just all about keeping their time, their schedule. They need time to relax. They need time to make sure that they have time for themselves. God might not want you to have that much time for yourself. And so we have to make sure that we keep things away. There's things like even down to social media or television. Those things are time wasters. Uh, you know, I, I'm not saying that they're bad. Uh, you know, there are things that about them that can be bad. Uh, but we need to make sure that God has first place in our life, not Facebook. Uh, we need to make sure that God has first place in our life. Uh, uh, not, uh, not a television show. And so there, there might be things that would affect you, but not somebody else. Uh, they might not need to lay aside that certain thing because for them, it's not a weight. Uh, but they, but excuse me, that they, the, the thing that they do struggle with uh, could keep you away from God. And so we need to make sure that we lay aside these things that draw us further from the Father. Uh, the fifth thing that we, can, uh, that we need to do to help the, the new man is walk in the Spirit. So go with me to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians 5, we're going to read verse number 16. Galatians 5, verse number 16. <clears throat> Galatians 5, 16 says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Yep. That's a pretty plain verse, isn't it? Yep. That's easy to understand. If you walk in the Spirit, if you walk how God wants you to walk, you're not going to sin. You're not going to fulfill the lust of the flesh. Uh, ask the Holy Spirit to guide you. Read the Word of God. Allow it to speak to you. Let God direct your paths. Uh, and, you know, if we would just stay close to the Lord, we would be able to stay away from the flesh. And that's really the, tr that's really the truth. If, if we don't want the old man to win, if we want the new man to win, then we've got to stay close to God. We have to be closer to God. And so, uh, you know, I remember as a kid, there, there was things that I was... Uh, and, and, and I can't necessarily think of a, a specific example, but I'm sure all of us as children had this same, this same problem. There were things that we would be perfectly fine with doing unless my, my, your parents were in the room. You know, there'd be things that I, I would be okay to say that or, or to do that, uh, but my mom's in the room, so there's no way I'm getting away with that. Uh, mom might not do anything, but she could tell dad. And so I, uh, I, I, I need to make sure that I behave and I need to do the right thing. Uh, and, you know, because I, I, I was a pretty mischie mischievous kid. I was, I was a, a sly, a, as they say. And so I, 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 was easy, I was good at making sure mom and dad didn't find out until they found out, and then I was in trouble. And so, uh, but, but we have to do that with God. If God is right here with us at all times, if we are as close to God as we can possibly be, then we're going to keep ourselves away from sin. We're not going to, you know, allow ourselves to sin. And so we need to walk in the Spirit. Uh, the, the next thing that we can do is renew the mind. Go with me to Romans 12. We're going to read verse number 1 and verse number 2. Just two more things. Renew the mind and one more after this. But Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. It says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, 
but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove that which prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Uh, and so now go with me to Second Corinthians four, verse number sixteen. Second Corinthians four, verse number sixteen. It says, For which cause we faint not, but through our outward man, but though, excuse me, though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. And then he says in Ephesians 4 23, Ephesians 4 23, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. We're supposed to renew our mind. And this one, to be completely honest, is one of the harder ones for me. Uh, it, it takes a lot of work for us to gain control of our mind. And we have to renew it. We have to focus on God and the things of God. And we have to do this daily. I, I'm a daydreamer. Uh, I, I can become very apathetic. I can allow my mind to wander. Uh, and, and, you know, and th I think, you know, the truth is, is your thought life can be sinful. And it can be one of the easiest sins to hide from other people. Because nobody knows what's going on there except for you and God. And so we have to get control of our mind. Uh, because that can be one of the most dangerous places for us to be. And so we need to make sure that we have that focus, that re renew our mind every single day and focus on God. Uh, and, you know, I, I know that, uh, you know, that it's, a, it's a, a phrase that people use. We, we just saw it today. We saw somebody on the side of the road stranded, uh, and they said, I need money. What would Jesus do? WWJD. And, uh, and so, uh, and so but, but it's true. What would Jesus do? If we're renewing our mind, if we're focusing on God, and we think every single moment of our day, how would God want me to handle this? What would God want me to do? If we have control of our mind, that'll help the new man to win. And then lastly, uh, we can yield to the Spirit. Go with me to Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, verse number 13. <clears throat> Romans 6, verse 13 says, Neither yield ye your members and as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves to God, unto God, as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. This verse is telling us to fight. It is telling us to only allow the Spirit to lead us. Yield yourself only to the Spirit. Uh, my wife can attest to this. I am a stubborn person. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, the good thing about it is she's almost as stubborn as me. Not quite, but almost. And so, uh, so God knew that I needed to be able to win. And so she, he let me just be a little more stubborn. Uh, no, but, but I don't like giving up control. Even, even down to things like, like driving. Uh, I, I am not really good with letting Jessica drive. She is a great driver. She drives better than I do. But I just like being in control. I like holding the steering wheel. I don't like yielding that control to anybody. Uh, you know, I, was, I mentioned just a, you know, a, a, a minute ago that I always beat Brian at basketball. Uh, and, uh, and the truth is, is that might not be true, but I don't remember a time that I lost. <laughs> but if I lost, it's because I let him win. Uh, that, that, no, but that's, that's, how, that's how my mind works. I don't like yielding. I don't like uh, losing. I like being in control. Uh, but this verse tells us that we should gain control over, over the devil. We should gain control over sin. But where we should be able to yield is to the Spirit. We should allow the, the Lord to lead us. We should allow the Spirit to direct us. And so for our conclusion tonight, I want to ask a question. And this question is directed at myself. But maybe you can ask yourself this question too. And it's this. I know that I'm saved. I know that I have God in my heart and I'm on my way to heaven. But I continue to sin. Why? The answer is simple. I have not dealt with the old nature the way that I need to. So if you, are, if you aren't saved, I, I, just, I, I beg you, get that settled tonight. Allow the Holy Spirit to live inside of you and to lead you in the way that I mentioned tonight. But this battle won't end until we see the Savior's face in heaven. And until then, I believe that what we need to do is every single day fight as hard as we can to only allow the new man to win, to only allow the Spirit to win. Uh, let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you, God, for giving us an opportunity tonight to be in church. 
Lord, thank you so much for uh, giving us the Holy Spirit and giving us uh, the new nature. But God, we ask tonight that you please just help us. Uh, God, help us to be able to fight the devil. Help us to be able to fight the, uh, the pull and the draw of the old man. Uh, Lord, please help us to live our lives for you. And we'll give you all the honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.